Hello, good evening. It's uh, Neil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of European markets. Okay, now um, be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading uh, uh, insights and uh, trading uh, action. Alternatively, you can uh, certainly qualify for the 25% cash bonus offer, and they are the leading specialists in spread betting and CD CFD brokerage. Alternatively, visit the educational site www.cfds.education, where I post my charts and analysis throughout the trading day okay so interesting close towards the uh, end of the month dressing call it what you want okay certainly uh, uh, an impressive bid going into the close okay now in terms of uh, the uh, the actual market close or the uh, the finish itself the FTSE managed to reverse its fortune and finished up one percent and uh, the CAC also whilst the DAX certainly remains the the laggard obviously with weaker uh, retail sales this morning certainly uh, hurting the uh, the actual uh, index itself. Now, uh, the weaker retail sales out of Germany this morning certainly hurt the growth prospects, and that was following on from the uh, weaker close in Asia. As we all know, the Shanghai was down almost 3%, Nikkei 1%, and the Hang Seng 1% too. Okay, now certainly a risk off tone from the Asian session, and that was expected to follow through into the European session. It certainly did until the US markets came back on board. Uh, until we obviously we were strong from the US markets perspective given the fact that uh, we had the stronger GDP numbers in on Friday and the Nasdaq as you can see had this inverted head and shoulders formation in play the 10 minute chart as you can see here now has pushed as high as 4263 but it certainly will not last from my understanding now the stronger economic data that came out on Friday was certainly questioned with the weaker um, a uh, weaker PS Chicago PMI data that came in week came in at 47, expected 54. You had pending home sales coming at 1.4% and uh, minus 2.5% on a month on month basis. So that certainly questioned and challenged the notion of stronger growth, okay? Uh, and the Fed's ability, obviously, to raise rates as well certainly questioned that to a large extent. And that's one of the reasons why we are up to a lot to. to to, to a large extent, but having said that, we had Chinese rate cut throughout the day, uh, the triple R cut, and also we had uh, the weaker inflation out of the Eurozone, which obviously helped the QE trade. As you can see with regards to the Euro USD, let's just bring up the Euro USD chart, and it certainly has been under pressure throughout the day. Uh, it, the pivot low being uh, 1.0860, although on the daily chart now, we are now coming into horizontal support. This zone here from 1.830 down to one point. 8 uh, 1.08 certainly will be uh, a solid solid bastion of support now the bullish arguments obviously are the weaker inflation data signaling more qe from mr draghi and obviously a chinese rate cut now the chinese rate cut itself failed to really propel the aussie and the kiwi higher so that itself that in and of itself is is a telltale that uh, uh, the market certainly remain weak regardless as you can see here the aussie now losing steam even with a weak economic data out the US, with Chicago PMI missing, pending home sales missing, the Aussie has failed to rally. Now, that's not a positive sign at all. That generally signifies to you a risk off move. Okay. Also, the yen certainly gathered pace. The USD JPY has been languishing ever since. So this rally that we're seeing in the US market certainly is uh, is very vulnerable to obviously being uh, broken. So if I bring up the chart, the USD JPY, that was the chart of the yen. Okay, where are we? USDJPY, here we go. So the USDJPY is certainly holding that support level at 112.8, but we are looking at potentially breaking lower and the HNS formation beckons. Okay, so you can clearly see there the bear flag formation, HNS, and we are looking to potentially move lower. Okay, so Asian market is certainly weak overnight. The rate cut certainly has failed to uh, allay the, or any concerns and fears, etc especially with regards to the uh, Chinese markets. Now, if I bring up the uh, Asian market Shanghai uh, index for you, you can see that we, we certainly did make a potential bottoming tail on the uh, daily chart here. Okay, uh, you have obviously you've got that gap. So it's all about that double bottom, whether that double bottom can hold or not. But from my perspective, given the weaker economic data that we've seen thus far, it certainly remains circumspect, okay? And uh, certainly will be challenged to a large extent, okay? So... That should be interesting going forward in terms of the uh, potential next move in this marketplace. Okay, bear in mind the U.S. data uh, was exceptionally, exceptionally weak. Okay, and that certainly did trigger off a risk-off tone. Although the uh, inflation data out of the European market certainly uh, has uh, relit the QE fire. Okay, 
Now, let's look at the markets from a technical perspective now. Okay, so if I just uh, move over to the daily chart. Now, you do have this inverted head and shoulders formation. Is the weaker inflation data enough or sufficient enough to propel European markets higher? That's a good question. And we still are yet to see that. Okay, weaker US data certainly negates that to a large extent. We have got concerns with regards to Greece as well. There was a, um, uh, there's been talk with regards to talks between uh, Europe and uh, and Germany potentially failing as well, or Greece and Germany uh, failing, or the Greece and European Union failing. So that itself is uh, certainly uh, very bearish. Now let me just go back and see if I can find the uh, the actual report itself. Okay. It was okay. EU set to ask Lagarde to intervene to solve the Greece dead end. EU failed to convince IMF on common stance for Greece sources. Okay, so overall, well, negative news with regards to Greece and whether or not this move can uh, occur with the Asian markets being down quite substantially overnight. That's a good question. Okay, 60 minute chart, we are holding in, well, we are into that resistance zone now on the 60 minute chart where previous support equals resistance and horizontal resistance previously. And uh, it's all about consolidation now before the potential next move. Okay. Right, in terms of the uh, German DAX, let's see exactly where we are. We have closed the gap now at 9513, currently trading as we speak on the German DAX at uh, uh, the level at the German DAX at the moment is 9475 around that region. So we do have 9513 gap fill resistance and we almost reached that before we put a topping tail and then potentially started to reverse, okay? So we've held up double bottom support here at 9335. And we certainly have propelled higher quite substantially up to 9500 region. Okay, so it should be interesting to see which way this market will move. From my perspective, my understanding is a QE trade certainly has been baked into the KK now, and we are looking at a weaker market given the weaker economic data and the concerns with regards to Greece as well. Okay, not only do we have concerns with regards to Greece, I mean, there was uh, there's been a barrage of information we've had. Uh, Shobel anti-QE comments, we've had Chinese PM anti-QE comments, we've had the G20 failing uh, to deliver uh, in terms of we've had weaker German retail sales, Lloyd's business barometer certainly bearish, uh, Brexit concerns, Shanghai Nikkei both negative, obviously uh, Greece concerns, Chicago PMI weak, uh, now Reuters poll as well, there's a 50-50 chance of QE so that even that isn't exactly convincing either. So. There certainly is a lot of arguments for this market to certainly move lower, especially with this weak growth environment. Okay, now let's go over to the French CAC. Let's see exactly where that's positioned. The French CAC has done very well today in terms of the European indices, but we are into diagonal trend line support, and there is a gap level of resistance just above. So we are into resistance for now, especially given the fact that the Asian markets closed down quite substantially. So horizontal double top resistance, as you can see here. Uh, we certainly are into that zone. So whether or not that's a distorted picture with this uh, uh, late rally in the the, uh, the European markets, that again needs to be questioned and needs to be tested as well. Okay, FTSE 100. Okay, back at that resistance zone with Brexit concerns looming, it's very hard to find a catalyst that already propel us higher. Can oil prices alone propel us higher? I mean, that's a good question. I mean, let's just bring up the price of oil. And as you can see here now, the oil price certainly is back into that resistance zone. So back into that $34 resistance zone, therefore looking, and it isn't re a real catalyst that's going to propel us higher, and therefore you are looking at a, a risk off tone in the markets. Okay, that's my interpretation thus far. Okay, so going back over to the FTSE 100, given the fact that oil is into resistance, then you are looking at resistance here too. Now we did have uh, uh, economic data overall for the FTSE, certainly negative as well today. Uh, if I can just go back and uh, retrace the uh, the data, we had some data out overnight as well. Um, and obviously the Lloyd's barometer, certainly business barometer, certainly came out weak as well. Let me just go over now in terms of the economic calendar. Let's just quickly recap and find out here.